On today's show, we react to the injury from last night and we get into the waiver wire, perhaps the biggest and most interesting week one waiver wire that I have ever experienced. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Leave us some comments about who you're picking up and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. The sun came up. Barely. Tuesday, September 12th. World's still spinning. Barely. I'm, I'm trying to be positive, guys. Look, uh, there, there's... A lot to talk about today. We have a waiver wire shell. The fantasy footballers back with you. Jason Moore, Mike, the fantasy hitman, right? I'm Andy Holloway. I had the bar set pretty low after the Sunday night football Giants Cowboys uh, matchup in terms of like, you can't get worse than that. And I guess it really wasn't because oh, we no. had a good, football we, wise. No, we had a good game, but I think it was worse. Yes. Yeah. Em emotionally, uh, infinitely worse. Repercussions wise, yep. definitely worse. But game wise, that was an excellent game. I mean, uh, you know, for all the people that are, you know, we're always pro points, right? Pro high score. That was one of the most, uh, you know, entertaining, low scoring games I can remember. Well, the headline was Aaron Rodgers' tenure with the New York Jets lasted uh, a couple plays. Four, to be exact. And down he went. Uh, and it was uh, almost, yeah. for me, it was almost incomprehensible. Like, the level of unfair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, look, I'm speaking, if I were a Jets fan, oh, man. I don't know how to wait. What, what were you doing there? I was mouthing, I'm so sorry. Yeah, to I the mean, I don't, any Jets fans. It's, yeah. I feel so bad. I just can't even comprehend how that feels. Uh, because I, I think it was I think it's the most devastating injury in the history of the National Football League. Maybe that you know yeah, you know hard, uh, hard to say, but Tuesday I, morning quarterback. But but I think it's up there because of the the expectations and the hype and the Hall of Fame quarterback and the defense that's so good and and the the long suffering history of the Jets and all of it and, and the and the part with Zach Wilson being the backup and the the bust of the pick and. And all of the the hatred from the fan base towards his performances, and you you come and and it being at home, right and in week front of your one week, prime time Monday night football in front of your home crowd against your division rival, like for it to happen, look, the NFL has five more prime time games set up with the Jets. Ooh. If the NFL had a script, the script writer is fired. Yeah, <laughs> this ain't the script you wanted. Man, this... and now it's I very mean, red wedding. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it's a red wedding, and it's probably a red wedding for other players on this team. I mean, Garrett Wilson. Wilson. Garrett Wilson got a touchdown miraculously because th that catch was unbelievable when the throw was terrible. But for the most part, Garrett Wilson's done. He's done as far as – he's not done as far as someone you can start. You could start Garrett Wilson. His sure. talent is – you know, can transcend. But his – you know, I drafted him – Several times when push came to shove, draft season, I drafted him over everyone, over the Devontae Adams, over, you know, he was like the one two turn for me where I'm drafting a breakout superstar. That's done. That is 100% over. He's not going to be a top five wide receiver this season. He can't be. Yeah, it's impossible with, I mean, with Zach Wilson. Five for 34 last night. He saved it with a touchdown. Uh, he, he had a great rookie year. Aaron Rodgers wasn't his quarterback as a rookie. But it seems very hard to look at him as a top five wide receiver, like you said. And Is Joe Flacco, what's Joe doing? Let's yeah, get Joe Flacco. Yeah, in Mike here. Mike White no longer there. I mean, I think Zach Wilson certainly can be better than he was last year. He can but, be. But it comes down. Look what you're leaning on here. You're leaning on Nathaniel Hackett to call plays for Zach Wilson to make Garrett Wilson what you wanted him to be. <laughs> that. That sentence is not one that I don't feel good. It's just a lot to take in. It is. 
And we, I mean, we had two Achilles injuries this week. J.K. Dobbins, who hit the waiver wire in our league this morning, yeah. Jason with the early yeah. sayonara, the Viking funeral for J.K. Sorry, man. And then Aaron Rodgers going down, just it just sucks. It, it for the NFL. Yeah, I mean, it's this people have and waited. Alan Lazard and Randall Cobb who oh, want the uh, <laughs> do they get a refund on those tickets <laughs> well, to New York? Lazard at least got a big bag of cash. Like you, New York has been waiting for this basically since February, February because that's when the whole saga started. Of you had the darkness retreat, he came out. He decided I want to play for the New York Jets. He goes on the McAfee show and said, tells Pat, I want to be a New York Jet. And from that moment, it was done. It was now we are waiting for Aaron Rodgers opening week to be our quarterback. I mean, I thought you were saying they've been waiting for this since the butt fumble. Well, <laughs> sure. They, yeah, they, I mean, they've been hoping for a good quarterback for a long time, but it's – so the passing weapons, it's a huge downgrade. Brees Hall, oh, I mean – Oh, oh, yeah. oh, there was a silver lining yeah, in this game. Yeah, uh, Andy and my guy. Yeah, you and I guy, have been big Brees guys. Brees Hall, who how, we supported through – How freaking dare you. No, how dare you, sir? How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? You will not take this from me, uh, from my cold, dead hands. Well, he, I mean, he I mean, he didn't really probably help any of your fantasy teams, right? Yeah, not, oh, he no. sure did. He helped me beat Mike in uh, oh, the, the Dynasty, Dynasty team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Brees Hall will... He looked all right. He looked all right. It was <laughs> so good. It was a little disappointing to see him not house that touchdown run. Like, uninjured Brees Hall <laughs> easily scores on that run. But he, he just got tired. He and will, Garrett Wilson didn't block for him. <laughs> He will. Did you see that? <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. He, Brees Hall will get stronger and be more involved. The, the point is, Brees Hall will still be okay, but the the range of outcomes where you're like, Brees Hall can be that, you're like, oh, he's going to be, like if he gets healthy, maybe he's a top two running back by mm -hmm. the end of the season. That that scoring upside is probably gone. Uh, it is It's brutal up and down for the Jets. 83-yard run that wasn't a touchdown for Brees Hall. Incredible. And uh, on the other side, you saw James Cook get the majority of work in the backfield. It was 12 for 46, involved in the passing game with six targets against second-best defense in football, best defense in football. I mean, the, the Jets and the Cowboys, who were my Super Bowl picks, their defenses looked the part. Yeah. And um, them, the 49ers, and uh, the Patriots, I'll throw them in there. Those defenses week one just looked Josh, unstoppable. Josh Allen committed four turnovers and took five sacks. Yeah, he did not play well. Uh, the highest receivers outside of Stephon Diggs were, were Dalton Kincaid and James Cook in terms of receptions. You know, Gabe Davis didn't do much. Yeah, nobody, nobody did much. I mean, you you threw out Dalton Kincaid as like the the no, next four, highest four for he had 26. 26 yards. Yeah, <laughs> it was like he, yep. nobody did anything. It was it was same Stephon, amount of targets as uh, Dawson Knox, Stephon Diggs, and check out. Yeah, Stephon Diggs had a great game. Uh, also, shocking stuff, guys. So, uh, that final drive of the fourth quarter when they had to get yards, and he just starts. Oh, Mike was going off. He yeah, because Josh Allen threw so many interceptions, and then at the end of the game. Where every team know, like the Jets know what's going to happen. Still didn't matter. And they threw the ball to Stephon Diggs over and over and over. And whoa, what happened? We move, we get in field goal range in a minute. Like do that, you dummy. <laughs> do you have? Uh, I was curious. Do you have Diggs on your on your team? I do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the truth shall uh, yeah. set you free. So so look, but, Alan. But am I wrong? No, you're not. You're Thank you're you. not wrong. I, whenever you have a true alpha wide receiver one. It blows my mind that you don't just target them over and over and over and over. You watch, you watch Kirk do it for uh, Justin Jefferson. Yes. It works. Do that with Garrett Wilson. Do that with these alpha stud wide receivers. They are good enough to just win 65, Tyree 70% Kill did okay, of the time. Just being yep. targeted yeah. every play. Um, there you go. I think you know Josh Allen deserves a lot of criticism. Yes. He has been committing a ton of turnovers. Like we give Dak a hard time over the trends in his career. Josh Allen is heading that direction, and and this was you know it was a very tough defense, and I think he didn't expect uh, was it Jordan Whitehead to be everywhere on the field, but uh, really, really disappointing performance from Josh Allen in a game that they should have been able to sleepwalk their way to victory. 
they really should. You know, and uh, it was turnovers. That was the only way yeah. that they were going to lose that football game and special teams, and all of it happened. Which, that's... Credit to the Jets, man. Yeah, oh, yeah, man. Great game by the Jets defense. Like, incredible game. But, I mean, I guess, we, thank you to Josh Allen, because part of what made the low-scoring game actually exciting is it wasn't punts. It was Josh Allen right. loading up, trying to throw the ball the entire length of the field into double coverage, and he's like, not just... Not just the one time he's like, he tried it twice. He's like, no, 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 no. This time it's going to work. Do you think Whitehead, do you think Josh Allen thought he was a bill? Maybe. I mean, because if you really want to look at leading receivers for uh, Josh right. Allen, I mean, three receptions for Whitehead is, yeah. is pretty good. That's, that's up that's there. That's more than Gabe Davis. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's take a moment before we get into the news and the waiver wire after that reaction to last night. And uh, let, let me remind you a couple things here. Follow us on socials at the FF Ballers, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. The community, 32,000 strong. Join the foot.com. Yeah. You get access to a bonus episode every week. You get our Discord community. You get premium uh, tools and reports throughout the entire season. So, all of the premium resources on the website. You get the expanded start sit tool. It's a way to support the show. We're an independent podcast, and it's a way to get access to a bunch of things that help you win. Uh, we're we're doing a lot of work on our side with the dev team and the and the the whole team here to expand those tools, including getting things out to mobile devices. Um, working hard to make that better for you, as we have been for the last nine years. Jointhefoot.com is where you want to go for that. And then uh, worth throwing this out there because we haven't mentioned it yet. If you bought the UDK Plus during the off season. You get the DFS pass, Jason. Yeah, I, I, it was a very good first week for the DFS pass. It was a great first week, and I I wanted to make sure we talked about this because we 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 do so many things here, and the Foot Clan obviously uh, we want you to succeed. And I last year, every year, every year at the end of the year, we're like, we never really talked about our DFS pass for people, and I want people to use it because so many of you already have it. If you got the UDK Plus, you don't, you might not even know you have. The DFS Pass, which you can get just going to dfspass.com. Um, and yeah, if you didn't get the UDK or you don't yeah, you if get you, the UDK if, Plus. If you don't want it, it is incredible. If you play any DraftKings, FanDuel, our, our picks have been crushing. Uh, they, they really are good. If you want to do like some prop bets, this last week we were 5-3 and three plus 2.38 units. Like We crushed last year, and this is all in there for you guys to use. And we have a new lineup optimizer. I know that the person that won the ten thousand uh, dollar tournament last night was using our our new optimizer. I'm telling you guys, these are tools that usually, like, if you go to a DFS only site and they're like one hundred and fifty dollars a month for the every month for the whole year, we charge nothing for this, um, very very little. But the the quality of the content in there, I just want to dap it up because Matthew Betts. Uh, Kyle Borgignoni, yeah, everybody that, that's in there. That Matt, we, that we is our is our team. Yes, yeah. yes, it is. It, it's our team. It, they are just crushing, and I want to make sure the Foot Clan knows that that information is there for you. If you got the UDK Plus, you already have it. If you don't have it, go to dfspass.com and and get <laughs> and, it. And I have to say this too: we have a new tournament takes writer as a part of the DFS Pass, mm -hmm. Matt Hakeem, who uh, we we've known for a couple of years. He joined up this year. He's a former Millie Maker winner. And then his first week, as part of the DFS pass, who he's delivering content to you, took home seventy k. Yeah, it's just what he does. Yeah, I'm gonna just send him my my paychecks. <laughs> um, all right, let's go ahead and get into the news. News and notes from around the league, presented by USAA Insurance. Well, there were other. Injuries we have to mention that weren't season enders but are going to really define the way you treat the waiver wire this week. Austin Eckler, you guys speculated? Nope, not injured, I not hurt. He is totally fine. There is nothing going on. He will be at 110%. Eckler, are you listening? <laughs> please, please. Oh, please. Jason had J.K. Dobbins and Eckler. Here's the real report. Eckler dealing with an ankle injury. His practice status for the week is unknown. He's a tough dude. He's probably going to be out there, but – that's going to raise uh, Mr. Yeah, Joshua Kelly. Yeah. Yeah, he 
His his waiver ranking is very interesting. That one's a tough call. It is. Because it could be really high well, upside for a temporary amount of time. And here's – because what we don't know about Joshua Kelly is, one, I mean, is the it, – was it – Miami? It, was it a level up of the Chargers offense? Was it the Miami defense? And the – the workload that Joshua Kelly was getting it early on in the in the game. When was Eckler's ankle injury? We like uh, the 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 right, play because Eckler had that huge yeah. uh, play later yes. in the game. The 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 play where, where me and Jason saw him walking strangely. This was like I think the back half of the third quarter. But Joshua Kelly was already getting snaps to oh, that yeah. point, and Joshua Kelly was looking fantastic. They have tried to find somebody they to have, compliment yes. Eckler, and they just never work. So you don't get it. So, yeah, it's going to be a tough call. Aaron Jones' hamstring, they're still evaluating it. Uh, they weren't in a situation where they had to put him back out there, so we'll see what happens this week. Kenny Gainwell, after oh, 18 man. opportunities in Philadelphia, dealing with a rib injury. And uh, I saw a report early this morning that said Fletcher Cox and him both dealing with the ribs. Uh, Cox was going to be okay. But Kenneth Gainwell was a wait-and-see approach for the rib injury. Hmm. He had almost all of the work for Philadelphia and against the tough New England defense. So if he's out, you're starting to look at DeAndre Swift and Rashad Penny would likely be active, and uh, good luck. Yeah, uh, yeah. very curious how that split would work. Like, you know, Swift was not good, so I'm curious if – yeah, like if all this if Gamble's actually out, is like do they just say okay, well Penny, you're you're that role, and it's it's going to be another situation where you're making Kenny Gainwell waiver decisions today, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and that injury could which a re reminder that game is Thursday night, so that's the 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 report on Gainwell is missing practice is that's the fake practice of Monday because uh, the, the, the the I also missed the fake <laughs> practice for same. what it's worth. The teams have to report should you have practiced. Who would have who would have practiced, who would not have? And so they're saying Gainwell would not have with a regular season or a regular week. Deontay Johnson sidelined a few yeah. weeks due to the hamstring injury this suffered. This is great news, even though what? it's terrible. Well, it's great news for how he went down. The way he went down was like you gotcha. worried that it ripped off the bone and this would be a surgery season ending situation. The fact that it's a couple of weeks. Now, this will be yeah, this was we'll, this we'll was see. few weeks. This yeah. was hardcore. Uh so I would expect at least a month. I you know, I I, I won't be surprised if they you know, throw him on the IR. Plus, it'll be a when he comes back, are you worried about it situation. Yeah. Jonathan Do Gannon. Do you drop him? Deontay? Yeah. Like, let's say you don't have an IR. Obviously, if you've got an IR, you just throw him on there. But if you're in a league oh, that doesn't man. have an IR, do you hold on to Deontay Johnson for – Save save that question for waivers. Yeah. All right. We'll okay. mention the wide receiver names and then we'll yeah, make that decision. Yeah, I guess it decision. depends on who you're picking up. Jonathan Gannon said Joshua Dobbs <laughs> will start week two against the Giants. Put the advantage – why would you let him know already? Now the Giants know. <laughs> they can game plan. <laughs> Jonathan Gannon, shame on you. Evan Hull will miss some time due to the knee injury. Zach Moss could return this week. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I had I had to laugh because the this is why you let a few weeks go by. The number one defense against wide receivers right now is Carolina. Um, nice. And That's I think it was three t one target to Drake yeah, London. Yeah, they, they shut yeah. down Drake London. Yeah. And then the number two defense against running backs on the year is Jacksonville, who shut down Deion Jackson and his multiple fumbles. If if Zach Moss does return, which he, they're they're saying he has a chance to return, if Zach Moss it's is Houston playing this week, it's Houston and Zach Moss. In my estimation, will be the guy, and that's Greg Dulcich. Very interesting. Also, a hamstring injury will yeah. miss multiple Yoo -hoo. weeks. All right, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. All right, let's get into the waiver wire. Welcome to the waiver wire presented by NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube and YouTube TV. All right, put on your uh, thinking caps. Let's put it that way. This is going to yep. be this is going to be tough. It will, and th there might be some receipts on these. Because week one judgment calls, overreactions, danger zone, right? Like yes, you can make some huge much. mistakes. Uh, last year, Christian Kirk had a great week one. Dak Prescott went down week one. CeeDee Lamb didn't have a good game. And it was like, uh, well, is CeeDee Lamb going to be done Right. because of the injury? Lots of tough calls. Uh, wide receiver drop candidates. You just mentioned Deontay with the injury. The questions out there right now, it's Drake London. 
No. 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 Rashad Bateman? Van Jefferson? Jefferson, sure. Sky Moore? No. Oh, for sure. You're trying? Okay. I, I, no, I'm not dropping well, Sky I, Moore. I would never okay. have had him on my Dang. team. If, I, no, I, I could not possibly <laughs> drop it. I'll tell you what. I uh, I would drop Sky Moore. I would not. I would I would drop Sky Moore over Kadarius Tony. Yeah. I would drop Sky Moore over Rasheed Rice. Sky Moore has had a year and a game with plenty of opportunity to prove that he sucks. Um, and <laughs> It does seem like that's the right take. And that's probably the right take with Tony, too. Because you don't play that many games without demanding more. And and in this last week, you couldn't have needed him more. He couldn't have had more opportunity. He ran the most routes. I mean, everything was set up to succeed. If you can't, I, Mike, if you I just hate, can't succeed forever, I'm, at some point you pull the cord. I'd, I'd look for. I, I mean, we're just saying in the grand scheme of overall, would you drop him? Like, we can get into the names. Yeah, let's, of, let's do it. Of like Puka. Sure, I'll I'll drop Sky Moore for Puka, uh, uh, Kendrick Bourne. Yeah, I would drop him for Kendrick Bourne. Romeo Dobbs, that one's really tough because his numbers were so. I mean, four catches for twenty six yards, but of course, two of them were touchdowns, so the yardage is going to be a little bit shorter. This, Romeo Dobbs is a tough case. So there oh, are Romeo Dobbs is for sure. I mean, he only he was still limited. He played sure. fewer than fifty yeah, yeah. percent of the snaps and looked good on his limited work. Looked good in camp, showed flashes last year. So I, you know, if you're talking Dobbs versus Sky Moore, that's an easy Dobbs for me. It's Eileen Dobbs in in that case, but there's there's a bunch of names where I I want to drop Sky Moore. It, I would wait. drop Drake London for Puka Nakua. Wow, Ooh, that is spicy. Yeah, I I, I will the, say this: it, we need to we need to make sure that we we don't get too spicy to be spicy, but also that you don't wait too long. Let I me, mean, it, it, it is an honest ex, conversation to why. say, no, I, 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 I want you to because I think you might be right here. Drake London is the more beautifully constructed train that I would like to ride, but the road that you're going on, it's way too bumpy. You're never going to – Drake London's going to have a game here or there. He's probably only going to have a game when he scores. He's not going to put up nine for one fifty six in a touchdown. Yeah, it he's seems gonna, unlikely. He's going to put up three for fifty four in a touchdown on his good game. I mean, it is spicy because Puka is like if if Cooper Cup was out for the season, how much Fab gets dropped on Puka Nakua? Oh, how uh, I mean, how much would be he be worth? Yeah, I mean, you got to call your shot. I believed fifteen targets, man. Targets I, are earned. I believed that he was a really good prospect beforehand, so maybe this is like confirmation bias. But when you have both of those, and you 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 thought he was good, and then he gets the opportunity and he dominates with it, I I would dump a ton. Now he is playing San Francisco, then on the road at Cincinnati for the next two matchups. Yeah, it's not great. The um, targets, man. Oh yeah, I, was, I'm kind of. It was incredible. I'm really into targets. <laughs> <laughs> what I will say, yeah, 15 targets is awesome, but you do expect Cooper Cup to come back. When Cooper Cup comes back, those 15 targets belong to Cooper Cup. The problem is, is when is he coming back? Just because well, sure. he went on IR doesn't mean he's coming back in four weeks. Can't come back till week five, so you've got a month. But like Mike said, you've got a couple bad matchups here during that month. So you could end up wasting a little bit too much. If he comes back in week five, Puka might not be the best pickup. If he comes back in week eight, Puka's going to win you some weeks in the meantime. So uh, I, I mean I would I would spend at least like right now with all of those variables involved I'm willing to spend 25 percent on Puka. That Nakua. was the That's number fair. in my head as well, and he, he is probably my number one wide receiver pickup. But to me there are he is easily my number one. There are three guys, in my opinion, that I am really wanting. Like if they're if oh, they're on the if they're on the waivers, I am going after them for sure. And that that's Puka Nakua. Romeo Dobbs, who I believe is is going to be the the one for this team, it will be more involved. And uh, Jordan Love looked good, and then Jacoby Myers. Yeah, I'm, my, I'm my, in on my worry with Jacoby is the who concussion. is in concussion protocol. If if the you know if if we won't have information, we will not have any concussion information. If we knew that he was healthy and active this week, I would be all in on him. We don't know that. In fact, I expect that he will. Maybe miss this week, so that I'm, that takes it down a notch. But I'm not spinning up on anybody but Puka. You don't. I, believe I'd in Dobbs? go like I, Dobbs would be the second one for me. I'm not really in on Jacoby, and uh, and 
And Kendrick Bourne, I'm completely not in on. Oh, Kendrick, really? Kendrick Bourne has had had games like this throughout his entire career. He has had big games, but I don't know that we've seen an 11 target game. And he, like, he's had multi touchdown games with lots of catches. I look, I it's just calling your shot on who you think the the week one uh, Greg Ogletree is, and think, that's Kendrick Bourne to me. Yeah, absolutely, it could be. We Andy's right. We've seen Kendrick Bourne show flashes of big games in the past. The one statistic that is shocking that makes me a little bit more in on Kendrick Bourne as at least taking a shot this week is the fact that he ran the most routes among all wide receivers in the NFL this week. He so it's like he was out there to be the one and then he was with the 11 targets and he plays against Miami yeah. Dolphins this week so you could you know you could have that back and forth fair like you had with the uh with the Chargers. So I'm I'm interested in Kendrick Bourne, I'm not like pushing chips in, but I'll uh, I'll throw him for a cheap, maybe free waiver waiver. I'm, I'm putting some decent chips. So I went and looked back. He's so the, his three he's got years, an eight year career. Sure, but in his three years with New England, he's never seen the he's never seen as many snaps as he got that in Week One. They were down seventeen nothing instantaneously, though. Yeah, sure, but it, but he, if he's going to be the primary, like if he's going to be the number one wide receiver then uh, uh, he's interesting because I, I think he is a, a good, capable wide receiver. And looking at the depth chart... You dropping Drake London for him? No, uh, not, not, for, not for Kendrick Bourne. Are you dropping Drake London for any of those guys? I, I am not dropping Drake London for any of those guys. I love Puka, and I wanted to listen to your argument. The, the thing that I... Thinking through it a little bit more, I don't want to overreact to the Carolina Panthers game where you know the, the Atlanta Falcons, I know that they're going to run the ball a ton. They want to run. They want to run when they're down. But at the same time, when they are up by multiple scores, they will do nothing but run. You know, that one target for Drake Lennon, they did not need to throw the ball. And, you know, I don't believe that that will be the norm for the Atlanta Falcons. I, I said I think they win this division this year, but I still don't believe that they're blowing teams out on the reg. I think they'll run all the time. But it's it, it's not just the running. It was interesting to see what the targets were doing. I'm, so I'm trying to pull them up, but Bijan had... Pull them all. <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm trying to type and do this. Uh, Bijan had a 35% target share. And Bijan's a great pass catcher, but he's not going to see 35% of the targets. He had six targets. targets. And, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I cannot listen to target share about the Falcons ever again. Target share matters not at all. But the, the point is, and Algier was at 18%. So... Over fifty percent of the targets went just to the running back position, and that is a point it, against Drake London. It is, it is, it is, but that's not something that is sustainable, and will it won't. I would bet very large amounts of money that we won't see fifty plus percent of the targets going to the running back position by the end of the year, and it will shift. And Drake London is the number one wide receiver. I don't like. I said Puka's the guy I'll spend up on this week because sure. the upside is tremendous. He's a rookie. He played for the quarterback that had the second best game of the entire week. Uh, they don't know where Cooper Cup's status is going to be, and they're he's not disappearing when Cooper Cup runs comes back. Puka's going to be the number two target in this offense, in my opinion. I hope so. I I could easily see this team. I, I could see Van Jefferson being the two on the two wide receiver sets. Cooper Cup, Van Jefferson. Van Jefferson hangs out with Sky Moore. <laughs> well, Van Jefferson <laughs> is not that dude. I mean, there are no, certain guys not. that we know aren't that dude. Joshua Palmer. Not that dude. Right. K, uh, KJ Osborne. Not that dude. Demarcus are, Robinson. Not yeah, th that dude. There are wide receivers who are good NFL wide receivers. I think Van Jefferson's a good NFL wide receiver. He's fine. He's he's important to a franchise. But when the when you get the opportunity to be an alpha, you just he, don't have it. You can't be an alpha. And so you know that's that that's kind of the thing with Kendrick Bourne and not going after him is we we know he's not that dude. He's eight years in the league. We know he's not a dominant force. Van Jefferson's snaps at the end of last year were 100%, 97, 98, 94, 94, 97. Yep. I, I, Three targets, one, five targets, two targets, four targets. I, week one is very indicative of for Van Jefferson for the remainder of the season. 2-2 I mean, Atwell or Van Jefferson? 2-2. Two, two. Uh, but like, but Puka's, I, I think once Cooper Cup com, comes back, if Cooper comes back, Puka will be more safe. He put, he was an outside wide receiver. Cooper Cup? Yes. Yeah, Puka was an outside wide receiver. Cooper Cup is going to play the slot for about half the snaps like he always does. And it'll be interesting to see if Tutu can keep that going. The last point I'll make for Puka is 
it's not just San Francisco. Uh, like the fact that they're the pass rush on Matthew Stafford next week is going to be way stronger than it was what Seattle was able to put up against Stafford. Stafford had a fantastic game. It looked like vintage Stafford, but he was also able to you know just rip clean throws. So when Joey Bosa and company, or I'm sorry, Nick Bosa and company are bearing down on you. It wouldn't surprise me to see a like a complete 180 for Puka's output. Clearly, we have some very contrasting opinions with the waiver wire in Week One, and mm -hmm. for good reason. There's you have one week of data and information. Um, Jacoby, I get it. You're you're trying to capture your Renfro of days of old in this offense with with Garoppolo. Uh, they also faced a pretty tough Denver defense, so I, that factors into my thought process there. I don't mind you picking up uh, Jacoby. Like, I dropped Van Jefferson, Bateman, yes. Sky Moore, Mims. I dropped those guys for Jacoby for sure. Sure. But I'd only spend – myself, I'd only probably spend like 5%. Yeah, I, I agree, especially considering you you assume you're not going to have him this Give me week. one more wide receiver name that people should pick up on the cheap just to keep an eye on. Rashid Shahid would oh. be the name that Is I would – Is it? Yeah, that for, for me, that would be the name I would look at just because he – he showed flashes. It's tough when you've got three wide receivers there. Michael Thomas looked good. Obviously, Chris Olave is is great, but uh, Rashid Shahid got valuable types of targets and Saints wide receiver looked by the way. good with him. Yeah, if you uh, couldn't deduce that from the Michael Thomas, Chris <laughs> Olave, he is a Saints wide receiver. Um, but he would be my next guy up to take a shot on and kind of stash and see if he he played fifty four percent of the snaps. I mean, the how many more weeks do we have, Michael Thomas? <laughs> You know That's, what I mean? Okay, look, okay. If you're going to factor that into the evaluation, sure. It the the Titans can the, the Titans secondary is very beatable. So the the game plan of all the wide receivers having a great day that's not surprising to me. But moving forward, Alvin Kamara will eventually be back, and the running back position will start to get more targets. It even, Kendra Miller could even be healthy this week, and the, we see a bunch more targets to the running back. The name I was going to throw out, it's, it's the spot starter, man. He's back. Mm, it's yeah. Zay Jones of the Jacksonville Jaguars who ran 89, or he was on 89% of the snaps, seven targets, five for 55. 55! And his touchdown was a truly elite oh. level of a, of a catch. Damn the, hands. Uh, Calvin Ridley is the number one wide receiver for the Jags. As of right now, Zay Jones is easily the number two it's not like well Kirk no it's Christian Kirk couldn't get on the field it was Zay Jones and Calvin Ridley and if you believe in the ascension of the Jaguars offense with Trevor Lawrence Zay Jones is going to be the secondary option and could move from a spot starter to a starter yeah, it's, for, for me it's going to be Nico Collins 11 targets six for 80 going to be out there every play CJ Stroud they're going to be a negative game scripts. So I, you just get that delicious garbage. Yeah, I mean, 11 targets. I, I like paying attention to that number. Robert Woods would be a backup on that. He had 10 targets. Like, yeah. those two receivers are going to get all of the targets in Houston. They may be gross, nasty, ugly targets. Oh, delicious but, garbage. But they all count the same. Oh, speaking of gross, nasty, ugly, um, I don't want to say it out loud, but with the Deontay Johnson injury, oh. there was a man who got eight targets. <laughs> and his target volume might go up, and his name is Ellen Robinson. What was that name? His name is Ellen Robinson. <laughs> What's that? Uh, wide receiver for the Pittsburgh Steelers, former superstar Ellen Robinson. The second. Ellen Robinson. The second. I mean, five for sixty-four. That would would that have been his best game last year? Yeah, probably. probably other than touchdown. Games. Uh, and I'll, I'll throw out Allen uh, Robinson could legit get a bunch of targets. He, he definitely could. Uh, the the website thefantasyfootballers dot com it will have our in, entire waiver rankings. We can't discuss every single player because there's still a whole bunch of other wide receivers who are interesting, like Rashi Rice of the Kansas City Chiefs. But if you are if you're in a deeper league and you're like you're not talking about the guys I need, we have it for you. Thefantasyfootballers dot com. Wait, sixty four yards? Is that what he got? Five for sixty four. Yeah. Oh, one higher than his season high last year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it'll be you're not playing San Francisco every week, so. Pickett should be better than should what you, we saw. Should you pick up Allen Robinson? I, I told you guys he had I to be know, in the waiver I wire. No, and I had him at the bottom, and the more I think about it, I'm like, Gah. The problem is, like, do you have self-respect? <laughs> I do, and that is the problem because I don't want to pick him up now. <laughs> All right, quick break. Back with the running backs.
All right. Well, let's let's see how much massive debate we have at the running back position. Uh, my top three pickups are Kenny Gainwell at number one, Raheem Mostert at two, and Tyler Algier at three. Mike, where are you? Uh, Kenny Gainwell would be my my top pick. Mostert is tough because he's he's so highly rostered, but he's just he is a name that you need to double check. And Algier at three, I don't. I do not mind it at all, but the because they his output was incredible, fifteen for seventy five, two touchdowns. But a lot of it came at the end of the game when they were taking care of business. And I don't know that I think the Falcons will be okay, but I don't know that they'll be able to close out like that. My and, my concern with him is just the I mean, over the course of the year, the odds are that Bijan Robinson will will take a majority That's what I mean. Or at least an increase in snaps mm -hmm. to Algiers. So the the kind of like crossing lines there. Bijan's going to get more. Yes. Algier will get less. He will not score twice a week. He's still, in my opinion, a good pickup because depth at running back is, I mean, you get through this week, like you're just grabbing for running backs. Yes. You want some, uh, but that's the only reason I have him behind uh, the other two guys. Moster, like you said, majority own. Gainwell, 18 opportunities in a great offense. You know, they went up against New England this week. He was still viable for your fantasy teams. But you're worried about the ribs now. Yeah, for me, Gainwell's my third. I know for you guys, you both were talking yesterday when we were, you know, discussing. Yep. He was e easily your, yes. your far and away one. I would rather have Moster and Algier ahead of them. Algier, you are 100% right, Andy, that he's not going to get two touchdowns a week, and his opportunities will become fewer as Bijan's becomes uh, greater. But. The Falcons, I mean, the same reason you don't want Drake London is the same reason you should be picking up Tyler Algier. They want to run the ball. They will run the ball enough to have multiple people be important. We saw it last year. You had Caleb Huntley having great games. You had Tyler Algier having great games. You, they're always going to have multiple running backs having opportunities. The fact that they used him around the goal line gave him 15 carries. He was involved in the passing game as well. Like, Tyler Algier should absolutely be picked up, probably started for the next month or so until we see – something that says no he's not touching the ball 15 times a game you know then you put him on the bench so I I think I go Algier Mostert Gainwell Mostert should definitely be picked up but probably rostered so in most leagues. if you lost Dobbins which you you did in, in did. our in our league of record you would if Algier were on the waiver wire you'd go after him instead of taking a shot on one of the Baltimore RBs of either Justice Hill or Gus Edwards if there was clarity there, like I, mean, yeah, I, I you will not have clarity. I believe, and so we should talk about the the Baltimore guys because it is my current belief, based on what we saw in training camp when J.K. Dobbins was gone, uh, what we how we, we saw the utilization in preseason, and I know Gus was dealing with his own yes, injuries from recovering. time to time, but I, I I think it will be Justice Hill, and I will be putting my bet on Justice Hill as the J.K. Dobbins replacement. Justice Hill is not great. But he is good enough, I think, to be involved. And and we saw a couple targets going to Dobbins. I think that the running backs will be a little bit more involved in the passing game. That will certainly be Justice Hill, not uh, not Gus Edwards. But then you have the the wrench of okay, they bring Melvin Gordon, activate him, and maybe it's a three headed timeshare, and you I just don't, don't want I, any of them. I wouldn't be spinning up on any of them. I'd spend, but like five percent. Oh, see, like, I, I'm I not know. getting them because I. The problem is, is that gamble has not been a fruitful one in Baltimore for three years. If you don't have J.K. Dobbins, you are hoping this is the week that it was Devonta Freeman has a good week. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you can't get a start, but you are rolling the dice. Sure, I I, I agree with that. I I would still probably and it's not go, that offense anymore. I would I would lean you know more in the 10 to 15 percent range for Justice Hill, or if you believe it's Gus Edwards because he's always been a good running back, I'm I'm fine with but that. Would you rather have Kyron Williams in his 15 carries? I would. I would okay. rather have Kyron Williams over. So the that puts them. Fifth and sixth in the order, Joshua Kelly. I I think Joshua Kelly is a is a, a mandatory pickup. I I would take uh, Justice Hill over Joshua Kelly just because you you've already got the injury to the starter. But I I do agree with Mike. Joshua Kelly is a mandatory pickup. And and honestly, oh man, I can't do this. Someone else <laughs> say Moss. what I was about to Zach say. Zach Moss, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Zach Zach Moss again. Should he? be able to play which we don't have the information that he will actually be ready to play week two but if he is ready to go against Houston 
just that one start because then you have the ball you have Baltimore and then the Rams but if you need a guy on like a, a, a you're not high in priority or you just you're not ready to to spend fab and you're like I got to get a, an RB2 play just something Zach Moss is that something it yeah it's tough cuz I know Richardson's going to get the goal line like he did last week maybe then he, you have to lean on maybe. Zach Moss I mean it's um, he already got hurt doing it are you dropping the three carries and one reception for Antonio Gibson? Oh, man. I'm letting him go. I am moving on from Antonio Gibson. I, I don't think he's a must drop, but if you've got these players out there, there's so many running backs that you there can pick are. up this week that are important. With better upside. With better upside. Antonio Gibson, the fact that he fumbled week one, and that was his big issue last year, I just feel like they're going to take him out behind the shed. Uh, they, 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 they've wanted to forever. I can't believe he fumbled again. I mean, I could believe it. Yeah, but I, I'm uh, gonna throw some a name out there that's my number four pickup. Okay. Uh, he so so that's Roshan Johnson. Hmm. I believe in Roshan Johnson's future for this organization. I watched the game. I thought he ran better than any of the other running backs. He was a tougher runner. He was a third down back. He's gonna catch the football. I know his touchdown was late. I don't care. It's his first game as a pro. I think he's the best running back on the roster. So I personally, I think you can get him for nothing. You know, what, three, four dollars of fab? Yeah. It, it, Put him on your roster, and then you might have what we've had for years, which is a rookie running back making a late season contribution that actually matters for your fantasy team. And I know that I'm alone in having him at four, but I liked what I saw with my eyeballs on the field of Roshan Johnson. Um, he's an interesting player, but he would be. Like you're not picking him up to play him this week. Of course it, not. Is he? A, no, he's, he's a stash. A, he's a stash. So, which I mean, that that's part of the strategy of fantasy football. If you are one of the very few lucky teams that made it through week one without having something devastating happen to your running back crew, then yeah, you should be looking at Roshan. See what happens in week two. Tajay Spears, who mm -hmm. somehow outsnapped Derrick Henry. I. He only had three carries, but he was on yeah. the field a lot. And he got at least two just crazy deep wheel shots that throws that they it didn't pay off, but the fact that they were actually willing to try it was interesting. And Sean Tucker of the Tampa Bay Bucks, he remains a very interesting stash, but this is just a long term stash candidate. Yeah, Ta Tajay Spears was on the field, that's great, but he's not able to play his way into the one. That's impossible. Right. He, he, only an injury to Derrick Henry would, would give him real fantasy relevance. Sean Tucker is the best running back on that roster for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, uh, the undrafted rookie. I think he I think he does play his way into the starting role. That's where I'm at with Roshan. I think he will end up in that spot. And the funny thing about the Roshan numbers in week one is that people are like, oh, it's garbage time. They've lost 11 straight games, people. He had the most snaps of any running back on the team. They've lost 11 straight games. If you saw what you saw in week one and think they're going to have a winning streak here soon, Roshan's going to get fair. second halves of piles of games this year. And, uh, you know, they're, the future is – Khalil Herbert is not the future in my opinion. Now, you said running back four, and we, we talked about the big three, Kenny Gainwell, Raheem Mostert if he's available, and Tyler Algier if he's available. But would you, would you really take Roshan over Kyron Williams? Kyron, uh, to me – is another one of those situations where he... If you need to start a guy this week, Kyron's more guaranteed a volume, but they play San Francisco. So it, it's a matter of what you're looking at on your... Yeah. Like, if you if you played this week and you don't you didn't end up starting Antonio Gibson or Deion Jackson, you're probably going to play the running backs that you have, mm -hmm. and then you're going to look to the future. And to me, Kyron's a great pickup. I mean, I think Kyron is, is right in the mix there. Um, I think he is a good pickup. I, I have him right behind Roshan, so. But I, I think it's super, It's still volatile. Like it, it wouldn't surprise me if next week Cameron had was back to being the workhorse running back. All right, tight ends. It was disgusting last week. In fact, yeah. the target leader at the tight end position. Cannot wait to say this. Oh my gosh! It's gonna hurt you even more than the Zach Moss comment, Jason. Do you what? know who it is? The who got the most targets at the tight end position? Yeah. Of all tight ends in week one. Oh, it's um, beautiful. Oh, just I guess smell that dirty old garbage. Zach Ertz? Zach yeah. Ertz! Oh, no. Yes. Was it, really? it was Zach Ertz. Oh. Zach Ertz with 10 targets? Yeah. What Embarrassing. Oh, baby. What are you doing, Cardinals? Oh, doing exactly what I thought they'd do. Uh, also, 
trying not to win. No, just getting him back because he gets targets, man. It, yeah, he gets targets. And an offense featuring Zach Ertz is not a serious offense. Do you not know how to get the number one pick, Mike? Because I've oh, got oh, look, if you're trying to trust Dobbs the to Ertz again, if you're Dobbs to Ertz, if you're and trusting the process. Good, but a I'm saying a serious NFL franchise, a serious one. is not featuring <laughs> Zach Ertz when you spent a second round pick on an extremely uh, a, a talent oozing tight end. See if he can actually do anything. This this is ridiculous. So are you saying you would? Even sniff picking up Zacher, who no. had ten targets and no, finished. With, I of course myself. I will. Of he, course I he will. He finished with twenty-one I, yards. Okay. On look ten at, targets. Yeah, look at the tight end position this past week. Blake Bell was number four. Zach Ertz was number 21. I, I know. <laughs> with 10 targets. Yeah, but you, you, you'd you have to lean on the targets at the tight end position. You can't lean on the touchdown outlier Blake Bell. I do. You, you just lean. Cardinals are going to be in negative game scripts all season long. Zach Ertz is on the field. They pay him a ton of money. They brought him back. Just ignore the name. Take the 10 targets. Take Logan Thomas. Take the old men because you need to get production. You can't just, you know. Most teams. I'm not saying he's the number one pick. No, 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 no. He's he is certainly not. He's fifth he's best 21. at best. Um, there is a great, great, great pickup this week. Hunter, and it's Hunter. Hunter Henry is two things. One, really good. Yeah, like he's actually a good tight end. Has been his entire career. He has never not been a good NFL tight end. He hasn't been a superstar for fantasy, but he hasn't been irrelevant for fantasy either. He's reliable. He is reliable. He's had double-digit touchdowns. The New England Patriots offense against the Philadelphia Eagles defense, a great defense, they looked so much better than last year. Mack looked so much better, and Hunter Henry was maybe his best guy out there. I mean, I know we got Kendrick Bourne, but he ran the third most uh, routes for the tight end position. He gets a great matchup against Miami. The reason that we went – Gerald Everett as such a good play is because Miami's really bad sure. at guarding tight ends. Parham! And, it, yeah, <laughs> Everett didn't work out, but Donald Parham did the, yeah. the other tight end. So Hunter Henry, to me, is uh, like 80% of every league should be dropping whoever their tight end is because you're should be, you know you're streaming. You've got you know garbage anyways. So let's and picking put, up Hunter Henry for a play this week. So let's put that to the test then because the matchup is good for Sam Laporta and he's a rookie. And his participation in the game, you, you said you were impressed. I was super impressed. Mm -hmm. um, he, he just literally walked in and was basically T.J. Hawkinson in the offense. Uh, Laporta, I would still take ahead of Hunter Henry. I think Henry's a great start this week. But from a long view, I would take Laporta. Where are you at with that, guys? I am 100% fine taking that approach, given the fact that Laporta has a ceiling we don't know. I am anti-rookie tight ends. That's that's you know If I'm looking this week, and all I want to do is stream every single week. I'm definitely going Hunter Henry over Laporta. But sure. if you want a longer view and you hope that something magical happens, that's Laporta. Because after the Miami matchup for Hunter Henry, you've got the Jets defense on the road, no thank you, and the Dallas defense on the road, no thank you. So this is a one-week Hunter Henry play. Um, if you Where want Laporta something is Seattle, Atlanta, then Green Bay, yeah. Musgrave. Musgrave was so close to a humongous day. If you watch that game, he was missed on two long – well, one of them he caught and fell down. Yeah. And um, would have scored. He would be the no, – I guarantee you, if it gets in the end zone there – He's the number one He's the number on the one week. pickup on the week. And then he also was just missed on another deep shot. I love the downfield targets for Musgrave. He's at the – I would take him over Ferguson. I would as well. So, given so it, to me, it's Laporta, Musgrave, Henry for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For, for me this yep. week, it's, it's Henry – Laporta Musgrave. Yeah, Ferguson is tough. He had seven targets. I mean, if if you're chasing targets, it did not turn into production. It was two for eleven, and he only ran ran fourteen routes. Which you could say, well, he only ran fourteen routes. That's 50 terrible. Deep percent. Or he was a fifty percent run. But also, that game was, uh, not <laughs> like that was not a game for the Dallas offense that I'm taking any real. Uh, you know, I'm not extracting any real data from that week one when you're when you win what forty to zero. Yeah, certainly not defense. from the passing game. The passing yeah. game you got to throw that out. That being said, they play the Jets this week, so you wouldn't. It's not a matchup. You're like, oh, I can't wait sure. to get Fergie in. Let, there. let me surface another player that's worthy of being talked about because this team, 
around the red zone, they've leaned on tight ends in the past, but they've had multiple, so you didn't know who it was. Mike Gesicki departed, and Durham Smythe ran yeah. 100% <laughs> of the snaps in this game. He had seven targets for Tua. Uh, it was three for 44. Third most tight end routes run. Played every down. Couldn't you do worse? You could do worse, but you could do better. Uh, Smythe is, um, you know, I, I think he's just a below average talent. His opportunity, the offense he's in, the fact that he's a uh, every down player. I mean, there's a lot to like here. You could absolutely do worse, but I wouldn't have Smythe above those other guys. Um, in fact, I don't think I would have Smythe above Hayden Hurst. Yeah. Hayden Hurst, um, you know, kind of a bust on his first round NFL draft pedigree. I didn't like him. <laughs> but with Adam Thielen there, Hayden Hurst seemed like a really important part of the Carolina offense. He had seven targets. He was five for 41 and a touchdown. I mean, what what was he this week? Was he like the number two tight end on the week? He had to have been up there. Number two, yeah. Man, what a week for tight ends. I well, Please come back, Travis. This <laughs> please upcoming come week. back, <laughs> Andrews. So uh, we're moving into defensive waiver pickups, which, look, you, you know some things. You don't want to pick up my boy? Oh, Adam Troutman? Yeah. Uh, I I would I would not like to do that. Okay. If Adam Troutman gets seven receptions this week, it will be for 30 yards. No, he had five for 34, Jason. So if he had seven. I saw those routes. He, he was. He will tack another 12 yards on there. Uh, Nope, not interested. All right. But you can be. Uh, I'd, I'd rather have the other guys. So <laughs> looking at defenses, to me, uh, the – my favorite pickup of the week, you know, you have Cleveland who takes on Pittsburgh and Kenny Pickett. It's on the road. I like that. I like Cleveland this week. But my favorite pickup is the New Orleans Saints. I mean, the New Orleans Saints play Bryce Young. Sure. I want a rookie quarterback. The Colts and the Saints play rookie quarterbacks this week. Saints were a great defense producing points last week. Um, I was surprised that they weren't at the tippy top of the list, but uh, – where are you guys at with favorite pickups? Uh, yeah, I mean, there, there's a couple. Like the the Saints are great, the Broncos are great, but those are those are both mostly rostered. If you're looking at a um, at a matchup where uh, you you've got a defense that is widely available, I like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I don't think their defense sure. looked bad week one. They've got Justin Fields in Chicago. Yeah, at Justin home. Fields will take four sacks or so. Yeah, and probably throw a, a throw yes. a pick. I'm least. just saying, like the baseline for it, the that's not a matchup that you would project to have a whole bunch of scoring. So that's great for for your DST. Justin Fields has a threshold of sacks that he has to hit. It's mandatory every single week, and then the potential for turnovers. I like is, the Giants yeah, too. Yeah, that also, was, that's that was the do, next. Like, I was going to ask, which pair of steel underpants do you want to put on? Giants are better than the Cardinals. Yeah, They're a better they, football team. So I'm taking the. Giants defense against the Cardinals, not the Cardinals defense against the Giants. Not not only that, but you look at what the uh, I know the Cardinals were in the game. They had a chance to win. They were you know there at you know against the the, the Manders. Giants are four point road favorites. Yeah, exactly. despite course, what they did, of course they are because the Cardinals didn't score a touchdown, an offensive touchdown. Their defense scored a yeah, touchdown. Yeah, uh, please go back to the note about ten targets to Zach Hurts. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, this is if you start the Giants, it is very safe. There's not a world where the Cardinals go out and put up 30 points and give you a negative. How many negative... touchdowns did the Giants score? Yeah, I mean, this might be a really, <laughs> really low-scoring game both ways, TBD. I think the Giants will get right this week. I do, too. There's there's a salve for a 40 oh, nothing loss, and it's the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah, so you know, the Arizona Cardinals, they love giving points up to the tight end position. So the Walrus should have a good bounce back here. The Colts, uh, they're not rostered. Uh, and I think they're a good enough defense. And C.J. Stroud, I love targeting rookie quarterbacks. Pay attention yep. to that. The Cardinals' defense on the other side of the the Giants, I I don't think is a good play, but I think it's a really good DFS play. You, you, if you want to take a shot at it, what's going to be a, a super cheap, cheap high upside, you know, at home against a team that just imploded upon itself. If it does it again. All right, thanks again to our sponsor, NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube and YouTube TV. With NFL Sunday Ticket, it's never been easier to keep up with all your favorite fantasy players. For $50 off your subscription, sign up at youtube.com slash fantasy footballers. Terms and blackout restrictions apply. Offer ends 919. 
full stream ahead. All right. Well, it's time to pick out a waiver wire streaming option at the quarterback position that, well, we believe you could throw out there this week and get production from. It is a Mike's pick well, because this is the correct pick. It is, it is the correct pick. It is the the least available pick. Uh, but it is, but I'm looking – so Yahoo has him at 70%. So it, it is possible that he's in your – it, 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 on your waiver wire, it is Mr. Jared Goff. Jared Gurf. Jared Even Gerf. if he's not on your waiver wire, he probably wasn't drafted to be your starter. Right, right. He's probably the complement to taking whatever, Richardson or somebody. So you're this week, it looks... Uh, it's going to be great. It's going to be Jared Goff at home against Seattle. Do we get the exact same game we got last year? You know that, what I'm afraid of? That would be of? pretty freaking sweet. I'm afraid Dem Detroit's defense is good, and Geno and them... Do what they that did in week be a problem. one. That would be the only thing that disrupts it because well, all of a sudden you have David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs leading the way because they're in the lead. That comes to we we don't have the information right now about Seattle's injured offensive linemen. Oh boy, will they be able to go or not? That will be a huge thing. But la it was last year Seattle versus Detroit, week four, ninety three combined points. But Jerick mm. at home last year, over twenty fantasy points a game, averaged nearly two hundred seventy five passing yards and two and a half passing touchdowns they have the third highest team implied total of the week at 27 points jared goff if he's on your waiver wire or if he's your qb2 in a single quarterback league i am i'm gonna be rolling with yeah, him jared this goff week. should be a top six quarterback this week he like should, in, in, yeah. in general so he, sh he should be started if so we've got kind of a uh a sliding scale here of streaming options jared goff is the right one but probably not available the next best option is Andy's, who is probably available and is a better play than mine. So, Brock Purdy. Yes. Who, yeah. Who is the first quarterback in the history of the NFL to win his first six starts with two touchdowns in every single one of the games. I don't think we've really, you know, entertained the the, the idea that Brock Purdy could be useful for fantasy football. And yet yeah, we, love, we love Brandon Ayuk. We love Debo. We love Christian McCaffrey's passing. We love Kittle. And I don't think we've entertained Brock Purdy could actually be, at minimum, a good streamer, a streaming option in the right matchup. You know, the Rams looked really good. San Francisco is on the road. It's a 26-point implied team total for, for the 49ers, and Brock Purdy is probably going to throw two touchdowns. He probably will. I uh, I love the call there. I, I saw a piece of news uh, go really under the radar, and it did make me – is tingle a little bit. Whoa. Did you, did you Spider see, senses? Like, yeah, a little spidey senses. Did you see the 49ers brought in, I believe today, uh, Ian Book in for a, for a visit? So quarterback Ian Book. I mean, I'm, it's probably nothing. They're bringing in, you know, for, yeah. for you, you can hold three quarterbacks on your game day roster. So hopefully it's absolutely nothing. But I was like, when they when they brought him in the day after, you know, it's like, eh, it's, okay, you know what, how's, how's that elbow, Brock? Because it looked great. That Birdie rumor great. has been in part uh, the idea that they could move mm, Sam Darnold. Yeah, there we go. Sam Darnold could be moved. Oh. Yeah, the Jets. How ironic. <laughs> oh, no. They can't. <laughs> no, I don't well, think they can do that. Of do course that. not. But, I, you know. Or can the, they? The 49ers know that they'll need four to eight I mean, quarterbacks that in the is, year. You know what the Jets should do. Uh, all right, so mine. What yeah. should they do? They should send that third-round pick to Dallas and go for it, baby. Go get Trey Lance. Do it. You don't need another guy throwing picks for your team. <laughs> Yeah, he uh, will. He will fumble. Yeah, thank you, Mike. You're, you're. It's a good point. Um, if uh, Brock Purdy, Jared Goff are gone, if you're in a league where you got a lot of people oh. holding on to two quarterbacks, nasty. we're getting nasty here. But I do think it's a good matchup. And Baker Mayfield looked all right week one. Um, you know, he's he's got two great targets in Mike Evans, who he hit for a touchdown, and honestly, he hit for another. He he hit Mike Evans for another touchdown. Mike Evans dropped the ball. Um, Chris Godwin there, and he, they've got a matchup against Chicago. Jordan Love just destroyed Chicago. Three touchdowns. The, here's the quarterbacks with three-plus touchdowns this week and zero interceptions. It was Jordan Love. That's it this last week. Um, Baker Mayfield has that matchup at home. The Bucks are three-point favorites, so I'm, I'm not worried about Chicago's defense. No, right. no, and Baker was one of the top five rated PFF passers this week. Tua was number one. Stafford was number two. But Baker was in the top five. Yeah, He I had mean, a good week. He did. And he's got really good passing Pass catching options and really inefficient running game. Oh, he'll he's gonna have a good running back sooner than later. Yeah, 
I got Sean Tucker. I I, I'll be honest with you. I know Tucker barely played. I wasn't impressed. No, I wasn't either. I I, I will say this. He he didn't look great. And I, I Mike, you loved Sean Tucker's mm-hmm. film. I yes. did not. I thought he looked like a very well-rounded player who doesn't have the explosive athleticism that you need in the NFL. That's kind of what we saw, but still better than Rashad White. Yeah, we'll we'll see what week yep, two we'll again. See. It's it's one week of football, and um, we'll find out what the truth is very very soon. We have uh, hungry for more on tomorrow's show Thursday night preview mailbag. We got starts of the week matchup previews throughout the end of the week, and uh, the fantasy face off where um, a good friend of mine is going to be spinning the wheel because it ain't me, baby. Mm, it's not me. It is not me, right, guys? No, oh. it is you. Oh, it's man. you. I was talking about you. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, I know. Oh man, it feels so good. Should have played Tua. Get off the Schneid with a W. <laughs> Herbert, what a bum. <laughs> All right, that'll do it for today's show. Thanks for tuning in. Catch you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.